What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today we will be looking at the 1969 Hearst Oldsmobile by AMT Ertl. Today I thought I would put on my Oldsmobile Club jacket from the 1990s from the British Columbia Oldsmobile Club to show you what's inside the AMT Ertl 1969 Hearst Olds. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. The AMT Earl 1969 Hearst Olds is a 125th scale unassembled plastic model kit. On this side of the box we can see different photographs of the Oldsmobile including the rear three quarter shot, the engine, the wheels and tires that we get as well as the interior. And on this side of the box we get a side profile of the car as well as a write up which I will include in the description down below. Here I have the instruction sheet for the 69 Hearst Olds. And I always love including these because then that way people can see how it goes together on paper as well as if you've lost your instructions, I'll be a great source for you to help you find them. On the lower portion of the instruction sheet we see all the symbols that we will be discovering on the instructions themselves in order to help you put the model together. This version of the kit came out in 1989 and look at all the paint color callouts. They go from A to X which means there's actually 27 bottles of paint you can use on your model. Step 1 shows our wheel options and there are actually a few choices that you have here. First off is the stock Rally 2 wheels which are right there which go into the Goodyear Polyglass GT tires with our wheel retainer here as well as the back end of the wheel. All this sandwiches together to make you one complete wheel. So if you're going this way you need to do this four times. There is also a custom version here where it has a Krager style mag wheel and then the same tire and the wheel backs as well as the rear tires having a gigantic slick in the back. So that is option number two. Now you could build this custom using four of these wheels without using the slick or you can build it sort of as a drag racer with the front wheels and the rear slicks. Panel 3 shows our interior going together. Now this is an old school style tub interior with the sides, floor pan, transmission tunnel and rear package shelf all molded as one piece. Then you do get these nice two piece rally seats, the three piece shifter. There is also the bench seat molded into the back of the bucket here. And then we also have our steering wheel, our dashboard and our floor pedals. This model kit features a very excellent high detail engine that it consists of the engine block, the cylinder heads, the oil pan and the front timing cover. All these glue together onto the block. Panel 5 continues our engine block assembly with our belts and pulleys, our power steering pump, our oil filter, our starter motor and the two-piece automatic transmission. Panel 6 completes our engine assembly with stock and custom parts. So if you want to build it custom or stock, you really have to look at the pieces and use the ones appropriately. So what we have here is our air cleaner, our carburetor, our intake manifold. We have the custom exhaust pipes and the stock exhaust pipes. The stock exhaust pipe also has the hose which goes up on the bottom of the air cleaner. Here we have our fan as well. And then we've got our distributor and here's our two different valve covers. The finned ones are for the custom and the smooth ones are stock. And then we have our alternator here going on to the back of our pulley. Panel 7 and 8 show our front suspension going together. And what we have in panel 7 is the chassis pan and we've got the upper A arms which will go up under here and glue in place. Then we turn the whole assembly upside down and what we have here is our tie rods. We've got our king pins here. We also have our front coil springs and the lower A arms and all that will sandwich together up here in the chassis. Panel 9 shows the completed Oldsmobile engine being dropped into the chassis. There is a little pin here which there should be a hole on the bottom of the oil pan for that to glue into. We also have our battery, upper and lower radiator hoses which is a added bonus in here as most model kits do not have the lower radiator hose. We also have our fan shroud and our radiator. Panel 10 completes the underbody of our car. So what we have here is our exhaust pipes and we also have these pipes here, that's for the custom. 
which exit through the side of the body. These stock ones, of course, go out through the back. We have the top anti-sway bar, the upper and lower differential, as well as the drive shaft and the rear shock absorbers, and all of this will go onto the back end of our chassis. Panel 11 shows our two-piece brake master cylinder being glued together and attached onto the firewall. We also have our windshield and the back glass, which will glue up into tabs on the body, and our rear view mirror. Panel 12 shows a lot of things going on here. So I'll start over here. We have our hood, and up underneath we have the ring that goes on the air cleaner. That is for this Ram Air setup to work, so that it seals onto the top of the air cleaner through the hood. So there's the Ram Air setup, which drops onto the hood and glues in place. We also have left and right hand side sport mirrors. One thing that's interesting about this is, on the Hearst SC Rambler, these side mirrors are actually the same because the Hearst company used them on both cars. We also have our front grill being glued into place on the body, as well as our license plate decal going in the license plate shroud. Panel 13 shows our decal location here, and what we have are the little decals on the side of the Ram Air, and then we have the one on the hood, and the one up on the roof. Then we also have these stripes going here, there should be one on the center of the trunk for this particular car. And then we've also got our headlights and the grills, which glue into the grill shroud. Panel 14 shows the completion of our model with the attachment of our rear decal and the trunk lid decal here. Then the spoiler will glue onto place. We also have our transparent clear red taillights being glued into the rear bumper. And then we have our license plate going in the license plate shroud in the back. You'll notice that the exhaust tips are also molded onto the bumper, which should attach onto the exhaust pipes underneath. Then we also have our wheel choice being put onto the car. So remember, you've got either four stock tires or the custom tires in the front and the drag slicks in the back. Here we have the body of our Oldsmobile, and this is a really excellent. You have the actual shroud right here, which looks great. You also have the brace across the front, which is our radiator support. And we have our windshield wipers up in here. The chrome trim around the window looks excellent. Let's just bring this up here. If we look on the side, this pillar we have to remove because it's a strengthener for the roof at the molding level from the factory, from AMT, I should say. There's our door handle there. We also have the nice indentation and the wheel arches, which is correct for the 69. 68 and 69 had this style, and then 70, they altered up the body a bit. There's our front, our side marker light, pardon me, as well as the Oldsmobile emblem, which is also a side marker light, if I remember correctly. Again, look at the nice detail in here on that radiator support. It also has the hood latch hole in there. And then we've got our vents back here. Now in this era, this is when they move the vents underneath the hood, just in case you're wondering, because before this panel used to be raised up, like say on a 66 Oldsmobile, be flush, but now it's sunken in, as you can see. So again, that's really a cool feature. Now here we have the roof-mounted belts, as well as the sun visors, and there are some mold marks in the four corners, and then up and under here. There are those little brace tabs for mounting in your windows. Again, it turns out really excellent. Now this model was originally released by MPC, and I think it has held up quite well over the years. Next up, we have the interior tub, and the only downside of this is the side door detail is very, very light. It's not as cool as when it's molded separately and you get the excellent GM door handle. Here we have our rear seat, again, really nice. The floor has some carpet molded in, but not underneath the seat, which is really interesting. And there you have your... Uh, 
gas pedal sitting up there on the floor. Again, pretty simplistic. Mold marks are up here on the package shelf and up in the corners of the floor. So again, you will have to remove them with the number 16 hobby blade. And then of course, underneath it's all perfectly smooth, which why can't they put the mold marks in the back here? Nobody knows. But anyway, that is our interior. Which brings us to our chassis pan. So here we're looking at it from the top down. There's a bit of flash right in here, which needs to be cleaned up. We have the inner wheel arches molded in place with the wires molded up in there. And then here you can see where the upper A arm is gonna go through that hole and lock in, as well as where the battery mounts. And there are some mold marks again, but uh, you have to get rid of those. Now up underneath we have the nice fuel cell, which is actually pretty accurate to the Oldsmobile. I own a 72 myself. And then look at all the brackets in here for mounting that uh, suspension in the back. Again, looks excellent. Looks like uh, my real Olds if I go up underneath it. And then we also have the front pan underneath molded in place, which is totally accurate. And the cross member. And we also have this molded in here, which is a bar. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called right now. Uh, oh well, that's the way it goes sometimes with making videos. But overall, again, a really excellent work and a really good model once it gets together. On this parts tree, we have our exhaust pipes and we've got the front part of the exhaust pipes as well as the back with these glass pack style mufflers. Again, really excellent work. Very simplistic, of course, but overall quite nice. These will go up behind the, uh, or underneath the rear axle, I should say. There is a seam line that will run all the way along here, which you need to take off with your knife. Overall, not very much on mold marks. They are up underneath, which is nice. There are a couple little tiny pins on here, and that will mount onto the frame or the chassis, I should say. But again, really nice work. On this parts tree, we have our dashboard steering wheel and the seat backs and the seat fronts. And before I lift this up, I wanna know in the comment section below, how many of you actually owned one of these cars in the past? And how many of you remember this dashboard? Now take a look at how great that looks. Again, you've got in the sunken speedometers and odometers and the clock in there. You have your AM radio as well as your glove box. Now, of course, on the 70 to 72 series Oldsmobiles, this dashboard has changed. But on 68 and 69, this is how it actually looked. You got that nice steering wheel there again. And look at the nice detail on the bucket seats. And it even includes the button you push to tilt this forward so that people can get in the back seats there. Again, another nice example of excellent molding from the golden age. On this parts tree, we have suspension components as well as the hood and the spoiler and our radiator and master cylinder battery and the front Oldsmobile grills. So let's bring this up to the camera and just have another look. So here's the vents now that are on the hood, which is quite accurate. And up underneath, you've got the two holes, which you would drill out for that scoop. It does have the fireproof matting, as well as some mold marks in the corner. Flash on this does seem to be a bit of an issue. This was molded in 89, so they weren't too exact back then on having uh, flash-free molds. There's that nice radiator with the texture. The battery looks accurate. Again, the front suspension components look really beautiful. So do the back end with the springs. You can always replace these with real springs if you want for that extra realism. And then here we've got our grill with the proper vents in place. There we go. Get that camera to focus. But overall, again, really, really excellent tooling. This parts tree includes the excellent multi-pieced engine, which does remind me of what Ravel was doing on some of their earlier kits. Remember the ones that had the cylinders you could glue in place? That was awesome. We also have all the exposed rockers up here and other great details here. Take a look. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself just how amazing this is. There's the special Hearst old style Ram Air Scoop, which was only on the 69. And again, look at that engine. You even have your push rods coming up in here. 
excellent work. It would be neat to see this on a bench on its own. So you always have that option for the diorama. So here is the ring that goes under the hood and there's our air cleaner. So there would be a rubber seal in here that would go up there to help seal it on the hood. There's our wheel backs again and the retainer clips. We have our distributor there and the exhaust manifolds for the stock version. Again, look at those nice, nice rockers up top. And then we've got our timing chain and water pump cover. So again, excellent work, and it would be neat to see your builds of these engines. Here we have our clear components, which includes our front windshield, our rear glass, and the quad headlamps, as well as our rear red tail lamps. So again, these are quite simple, the glass course being nice and smooth, and the tail lights actually have the crosshatch pattern. Remember, it goes north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle. And then for our tail lamps, there's also the texture up in here. So again, very nice work done by MPC AMT Ertl. Here we have our chrome parts tree with our Rally 2 Oldsmobile wheels. And our intake manifold and our fan. And here are the valve covers as well as our custom exhausts and manifolds and then carburetors. We also have our front and rear bumpers here and the custom Krager style wheels as well as our sport mirrors and our gear stick lever and our shift pattern for the top of the console there. So bringing these up to the camera, look at how nice the Rally 2 wheels are. They do have the holes out of them which is nice and the Oldsmobile logo in the center of the wheel cap. Again our valve covers, the custom ones have the fins in them and the stock ones are smooth. Now the fan and the intake manifold, I do believe if you're building the stock, they would be, of course, uh, not chrome plated. This would be black and this would be the engine color, which I do believe was metallic blue for the 455 and gold for the 350, which is what I have. Uh, although this is 69, Oldsmobile changed a lot of paint and engine colors in these years, so it is kind of interesting to try to figure out what color went underneath what until you get to 1970. It seems to stay for a few years then. We also have our front turn signal uh, parking lights as well and there's the holes for those grills to go in. Again really nicely done. Uh, not too much on mold marks and flash on this parts tree but overall quite excellent. Here we have our Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. Now these are bias belted tires back in the day. And we also have our Goodyear drag slicks right here. So remember these from the past. This kit is really old, of course. You can tell from the tires in there as all these have been redone. But what we have here is a very nice tread pattern. Inside on the back is a spider. And you're gonna have to cut that out with the regular number 11 hobby blade. Be very careful as you do that, of course, not to get into the sidewall. Now what we have here is Goodyear molded in, as well as a Polyglass GT on there. And the tread pattern, of course, is really, really nice. Now, looking at the drag slicks, it is the Goodyear Blue Streak style. And that's a slick part there, so there's no tread on it. Now what you need to do is take these in your tire wheel spinner and just sand that edge down to make it look really nice. If you don't know what I mean by any of that, you can always check out this video scrolling across up here in order to know how to perfect out your model car tires. Here we have our decal sheet with the I Love Model Cars bumper sticker and a Utah 000 AAA license plates and a California SRM 864. We also have the Hearst Olds emblem, which goes on both sides of the air, uh, sorry, the fenders, and then one on the trunk lid, as well as the HO455, which would go on the Ram Air. And then we have our nice gold stripes. These are the body ones, that's for the hood. And then we have the trunk and the roof. Well, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video where we got to see inside the AMT Ertl 1969 Hearst Olds. And if you've built this model in the past, let us know down in the comments section how you liked it and if you love those posable front wheels. 
That again is really awesome. Say, do you want a great deal on model cars and all kinds of other cool things? Well, go over and check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca and sign up for our newsletter and then go check out our model car section. If you sign up for the newsletter, each week I can send you out a brand new flyer with great deals on all our model kits and everything else at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and check out this other one coming up here, which you will also enjoy. And until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.